Alrighty, Lions Den, I am on your video right now, and I looked through a little bit. It looks like you're doing some knee slice drills, and I did notice a couple things that we could fix up right away. So, you see on that one how the knee shield almost got in front of you? Okay, this happens uh, pretty often. The problem is you're kind of reaching a little early for that underhook. So, you see how your, your hand came completely off the knee? Okay, your knee didn't really go very far and your hand's not on the knee at all and you're already reaching for that underhook. If he's paying attention, what he does is he just re-pummels you. Okay, and uh, by the time you hit the ground, you're not going to have an underhook. You'll have to do a bunch of recovery stuff. And we definitely want to avoid that. So, what you need to do is actually keep your hand on that knee. Okay, until your knee starts to go. And then you're going to take your elbow and forearm okay and you're it's going to just kind of slide up it's almost like i'm going to lean on my hand okay here then i lean on my forearm then i slide up into the underhook okay and that just doesn't give him any time to actually turn that knee shield in or uh it makes it a lot harder for him to re-pummel you because they don't get that sense of danger where you're reaching up for the underhook and making it really obvious you're trying to get it okay so it doesn't always matter against someone that's kind of lower level it really doesn't matter at all because they're not going to re-pummel you. But against a higher level guy, that is really, really important. Okay. Now, as far as your knee slice itself for the rest of it, okay, you're doing pretty good falling across, coming down chest to chest. Okay. That foot is fine posting out. I'd be a little worried about posting it out that high every time because you just don't want to have someone go into your leg if, you're not, if you don't have the pressure to keep them pulled into the underhook side. That's where you're going to run into problems. It's not that you can't uh, deal with it, but it's going to be harder. That was a little better. That one looks like you. so. When I do these knee slices, I'm actually falling into <laughs> side control essentially, or into the, the knee slice position. Like I shoot my knee so hard, straight A to B to the mat that that. Um, I'm literally falling down into side control. Like that. Okay, that was good. Uh, posting out. You might be posting a little bit far. What you want to think about doing is just getting down chest to chest as fast as possible. So it's not just a corkscrew motion. It's not generic. Okay, in the way a lot of people think it is. I'm, like, when my knee is going out, I'm diving towards that underhook. Okay? That's my big goal is get my chest as close to that underhook as possible. Okay? So, like me squeezing him up into me or me pulling myself down into him as long as i can secure that underhook to my chest in some way it makes it very difficult for him to repummel me and i can use two arms now if i have to i can do the butterfly grip and i can squeeze it into my chest uh, it just depends on how much resistance i'm getting and how much pressure i have with my underhook Okay, um, make sure you always push that hook off a little bit, okay? Um, I don't knee slice with the daily heave hook in, and I don't knee slice with the daily heave knee in front of my knee, okay? I always make a little bit of space every time. A lot of times I push it down to the ground, and that's almost too far, because what they do is they abandon daily heave right away. A lot of times they don't, though. A lot of times, <sighs> fuck me, sorry about that. You can, like, kind of smash their daily heave hook so far down that you pin their leg on top of their hand and they almost can't pull their hand out fast enough if you put enough weight on it. But for the most part, just put, if you push it down about halfway before you start each cut, it's going to be fine. Or if they're really trying hard to keep their knee in front of your knee, you could just make a tiny bit of space, okay, and just to get it out from in front of your knee so you have somewhere to blast it. But I mean, you have a pretty functional one. See, that last one was a little more direct. Oh, God, you switched sides. Now, you got to understand, even my knee slice looks bad. on my or Not terrible, but, like, on my left side, oh, boy. I just kind of go for other passing options when I have them on that side, unless I'm already kind of down. Like, the diving knee slice is mechanically very difficult to do correctly. 
So my uh, my theory, for the most part, on being ambidextrous in jiu-jitsu is you should really focus heavily on one side and make sure that you understand all the details and you spend a lot of time actually progressing and kind of making those epiphanies where you're like oh, okay makes sense now why you shoot your knee because you've done it so many times you're starting to see those little details then you can always go back and teach it to yourself on the other side but i don't actually tell most people to just do uh, both sides especially not when they're newer to a move now, see, that was the big problem. Okay, you see how that knee just came in? You have to push that knee down. Okay, you can't really just go... If they're on your ankle like that from standing, you can't just go knee underhook most of the time. Honestly, you should have finished that, though. Uh, if you kept that underhook at all, even if that knee shield comes in, there's a ton of ways we can recover. Yeah, and I would make that part of your, your drilling then. You want to think... Not so much about... Uh, you can say it's coming out perfectly, but being able to kind of like dynamically finish it or recover it based on what's happening. What the fuck? Okay. Okay. <laughs> I like it. So like that one would have been really hard to sell. You see you reached all the way down. And that's, you see how your hips are now so far behind you, it's hard to generate any power here. It, all he has to do right now is take his knee and just turn his knee in or rotate his knee in and you're not going to knee slice him anymore. You'll have to cut way out and then he's just going to knee shield you and you're going to have a hell of a time actually finishing it because he could re-pummel you at any time. So that that's the kind of stuff that I'm trying to avoid. I think you're almost... Okay, so you, you never want to catch yourself on this arm at all, okay? If that arm is going on the mat, like your elbow, your forearm, anything like that, if it ever goes on the mat and has weight on it, then you're kind of, I didn't mean to draw smiley, you're kind of misunderstanding the position in general. So, that hand, that underhook arm, the second it slides up to anything, its entire goal in life is just to squeeze, okay? It's like, it, it's not supposed to do anything except for hold that underhook harder than fuck. So that little time where you actually put your elbow on the mat, that's time he should have repummeled you. He should have came around the front of your head and turned into you or something, or you should have tried to circle his hand on the inside of this when there was a little bit of space. Like, you notice it and you close it off afterwards, but just something you got to avoid. I'll put my head on the mat before I'll put that hand on the mat, okay? Yeah, that was better. Okay, so for the most part, though, those were actually pretty decent. Uh, you've definitely got the mechanics of shooting your knee down. I would shoot your knee harder, though. That's the next thing I would really start working on after you fix the the little mistakes you're doing with your underhooks and not pushing the knee down enough. Your knee, let's go back and I'll find, uh, I'll draw this out. Okay, your knee right here needs to be the first thing that leads, and it doesn't just fall. I shoot it down, okay? So it, it's like a, like you launch a fucking cannon, right towards the mat, wherever you're going to put it. Uh, you should be able to look ahead of time and see where you want your knee to go. And then, uh, I'll get it, one where you're facing me, yeah, uh, that's better. So you, you're, you're just kind of rocking. Your knee should be shooting right now. It should be literally a straight line, A to B, getting on the mat anywhere next to his hip, anywhere here, or anywhere here. Okay, if his arm's in the way, that's annoying. You can land on his arm and it might give you a little bit of problems, but if you don't lose the underhook, you can just take your time, keep that underhook, come down, Pull his leg out of the way, or his arm out of the way, and get your knee on the mat up against his ribs anyways. So, it ends up not being a huge deal. Yep. So, those are the things that I would work on next. Other than that, though, this is, uh, yeah, that one. That one's the one that went wrong. Um, quite a bit better than a lot of people's that I see trying to do the diving knee slice, especially if you're newer to the diving knee slice, then that's fan isn't this fan fantastic? If you've been doing the diving knee slice for a year, then it's just a couple things you didn't notice you were doing wrong, and they're easy fixes, but this is good. Overall, uh, give it a solid, definitely at least a B plus because the diving part is the, the hard part, being able to corkscrew and fall on the mat, and trust yourself falling and getting the underhook while you're falling. So, yeah, excellent job. Bye, have a great time.